Yeah, my name is John Appel, and I um, work in historic graveyards. I conserve gravestones, monuments, and um, historic structures. I travel all over the country, and um, today we're in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I do training seminars and workshops all over the United States that um, train towns, municipalities, um, churches, uh, historic societies, and um, volunteers to um, do many different types of repairs and, um, and help um, take care of um, historic graveyards. Oh, really, the field of uh, gravestone preservation conservation is not that old. Um, it's 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 still not really that scientific in many respects because there's um, you know not that many people working in the field. The older stones that are um, dating from uh, the 16, 17, 1800s are generally um, soft materials like sandstones and marbles and they tend to be fragile, very friable and, um, and you have to treat them in different ways and even cleaning them can be harmful and of course cleaning is something that's always overdone and done improperly I, I should say and um, like using bleach and um, pressure, pressure washing with you know 2000 PSI on a very soft material which is basically like a sandblasting, which is, which is still done also today. Some modern monument dealers also do, claim they do preservation, restoration, and they'll just lightly sandblast historic stones to make them look new because it'll quickly make a very weathered marble um, monument white again, but you're removing stone and opening up the pores and it's just a detrimental thing. And with the mortars, of course, um, you know, everything that uh, relates to gravestones as far as um, setting them into the socket bases that are very common on the, on the gravestones with, throughout the 1800s and into the early 1900s. Um, you know, if it's just done in a hard Portland cement concrete uh, cement mortar, um, it's not compatible with the softer base material and the headstone material. So then that can cause more harm than, than good. A lot of times you're working on things that were previously repaired. And so then there's always um, issues with, um, with, with loss, stone that's missing or that's highly eroded, um, Portland cement or other um, repair materials ranging from Gorilla Glue to liquid nails to caulk to really anything that you could possibly think of or find at a, a hardware store either today or a hundred years ago. So, um, but the overlying principle is to be sensitive to the material and not to do things that are destructive or reduce the material to try to handle them, to relate to them uh, more like um, you would an archaeological um, artifact as far as um, you know to not diminish them to try to preserve as much of them as possible well, the one thing with mortars is that I always try to convey that the mortar should be considered sacrificial and the mortar should be a replaceable material eventually and if it fails in 30 or 50 or 75 years and the stone is still workable that's a good thing because um, you know we can always remortar it in place the overlying principle of the whole field is that um, you know we want to um, do no harm and try to leave the site improved but not looking like it's a kind of um, Mickey Mouse version of what it once was um, as far as you know restoring things to some theoretical newness um, is not what we're trying to achieve and also just not to have the expectation to make things look new because they're old and, and so to make them look new is not really what we're desiring here. It's really more to, um, you know, to preserve them and make them, um, you know, weather better and stable um, as much as possible, but um, not in a way that is, um, you know, detrimental. So, um, you know, the desire to make things really clean and really new is common and, and, it's, and it's, it's not a good um, mindset.